بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم This is the second part on the subject of rulings or ruling on funerals This is the rulings regarding the uh, entering upon the ill or the sick person first of all what is the definition of illness what is the definition of illness <clears throat> the illness definition is the change of the body's condition from its normal state of health which is the medium state and the scholars defined or categorized illness into three types the first is known as al-marad al-makhouf marad meaning illness so the first kind is al-marad المخوف What is this? This is the illness that is likely to cause death likely to cause death such that it wouldn't be a surprise if one comes to know that the ill person in this state died Is that clear? This is the first type. The second type is the slight, the slight illness unlikely to cause death. Slight illness unlikely to cause death. The third type is the sec is the second kind but permanent you understand the third type is the second type but permanent clear so an illness that is unlikely to cause death but it is what permanent an example on the first type which is al-marad al-makhouf, the illness that is likely to cause death, heart ailment, strokes, cancer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's well-being from all of that. The, an example on the second type, an example on the second type is the slight illness unlikely to cause death this is as such that if someone dies of it it would be considered as sudden death it wouldn't be said because of the illness like for example toothache do you understand is that clear and if he dies of it, it wouldn't be said that he died of it. It would be like sudden death. Clear? Okay. An example on the third type. An example on the third type. Uh, kidney uh, malfunction. Uh, kidney disease. Uh, diabetes. Now, we have to add something to this matter of the third type. If this third type renders the sick person bedridden, then his status will be of the first type. 
Is that clear? If it would make him stick to bed, then it will be now of the first type. Under this classification, each has its own rulings. Rulings in terms of what? Rulings in terms of managing one's wealth. So in the case, in the first case, nothing of his management or disposition would be legally executable except that what amounts to one third of it to non heirs, non inheritors. Because what exceeds the one-third is from the rights of the ayers. None of his management of disposition is legally executable or suitable except that which, is, which amounts to one-third only. Because more than the one-third, he cannot donate. Because that would be the rights of whom? The right of the heirs. In the second type, he can dispose as he wishes. If he falls under the second category, he can dispose and manages as he wishes. As to the third type, if it renders him bedridden, then its ruling will be like the first type. None of his gifts or backwits, backwists would be uh, executable in that which would exceed the one third. So if he becomes bedridden, then the rulings are the same as the first type of illness. Yes, yes, he would be from the second type. Now concerning the... No, if bedridden, then the first type. No. Now, uh, entering upon the uh, sick person and the rulings. Now we know what's the illness and the classification of the illnesses in terms of the rulings. In the hadith uh, of the Prophet وسلم, as collected in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said, and the translation of the meaning, you find it in book 26 and hadith number 537, حَقُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ sit. The six are the rights of the Muslim over another Muslim. And he mentioned from the six, وَإِذَا مَرِضَ فَعُدْهُ And if, when he falls ill, then visit him. When he falls ill, then visit him. So what is the ruling concerning the entering upon the sick person? The evidences indicate that this is a collective duty, a collective duty, which the Prophet ﷺ commanded the believers to do. And it may turn to be an individual duty from those, from those individuals who are entitled to be dealt with righteously, like the relatives, mother, uh, father, grandfather, son, daughter, etc. Is that clear? Now, what are the etiquettes? 
The first thing, the person intends to comply with the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in entering upon the sick person in order to achieve and gain the reward. That is because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded this and it is affirmed that he used to do it. So therefore this is the first thing that the person should do is to have the intention to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that. The second thing is to intend doing good to his brother. Why? Because he will be pleased in that. And he would see that you have done a right that belongs to him. قال الله تعالى الله the most high says in chapter 2 surah al-baqara 195 وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and do good truly Allah loves the good doers Thirdly, when he enters upon him, he asks him about his condition. How are you? What's causing you discomfort? And she, he should ask him about the deeds that are important. Mostly and most importantly, the deeds that are related to the worship from the purity and salah prayers, especially if the visitor, quote unquote, is a scholar or a student of knowledge, because the, the sick person will benefit from him. Because the sick person will benefit from him. We find <coughs> some sick people abandon the worship, taking as an excuse that they cannot perform the purification. They should be reminded that the salah is to be performed under any situation, even if they cannot perform the ablution and there is no one to assist them, assist them on, on it, or they could not find to do the dry ablution, or if it will cause them harm. So, under all circumstances, the prayers is still required. It is not lifted as long as the person have sound intellect. Also, you find among the the sick people, uh, you find that they performed tayammum, dry ablution, yet they are able to reach the water or use it without harm. And this is wrong. Also, you find some of them combine and shorten the prayers. If, even if they are in their hometowns. You find them combining and shortening. This is not valid if he is not uh, a, a traveler <coughs> with respect to the combination of the prayers it is valid for the sick person but it is invalid not permissible for him uh, to shorten the prayers if he is in his residence because the shortening is from the matters 
related to the traveler. The traveler can do uh, both as to the combination. It is permissible if he finds yeah, difficulty or hardship. But if he shortens while in residence, then his salah is invalid. Is this clear? Now, the fourth matter in the etiquettes and manners is to speak to him that which will give him comfort <coughs> and introduce ease and happiness upon him. Like, for example, when the person enters, he may say to him, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. Your condition today is better. Even though, even though, physically it's the worse. Why? Because the more the illness intensifies, the more the reward is. And therefore his condition would be better. Is that clear? The fifth, the fifth matter is to remind him concerning repentance, especially if he knows that he is from those who were negligent and indulged in sins, those who were unjust to themselves. The sixth matter, he should remind him of the legal will the bequest that is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim book 13 3987 in the hadith of Ibn Umar may Allah be pleased with him and his father he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, It is the duty of a Muslim who has something which is to be given as a backwist, not to be, not to have it for two nights without having his will written down regarding it. Especially if the sick person is known to be a trader, sells and buys things, because he will be involved, he will be involved in uh, selling and buying and making uh, contracts and so forth. Seventh is to remind him to return people's rights to them if these rights were uh, of the wealth type or speech regarding them talk about them seek their forgiveness and if there is any wealth, then he returns it, or a property. The eighth is to admonish him in the good way to do that which is good. He reminds him of Allah Azza wa Jal, reminds him about the Qur'an and recitation, Reminds him to make tahleel, remembrance of Allah, tahleel, saying la ilaha illallah, tasbih, saying subhanallah, declaring Allah free of all imperfection, takbir, declaring that Allah is greater, 
Ninth, he should invoke Allah for him. And we know from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when he entered upon Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas in his illness, he, Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas, radiyallahu anhu, said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered upon me and said, Allahumma shfi Sa'dan, O oh Allah, cure Sa'd, Allahumma shfi Sa'dan, O oh Allah, cure Sa'd, Allahumma shfi Sa'dan, O oh Allah, cure Sa'd. And from the invocations, is that which is affirmed, is the hadith or the dua, لا بأس طهور إن شاء الله Never mind May it Meaning the sickness Be a purification If Allah wills As supported by Al-Bukhari لا بأس طهور إن شاء الله When the Prophet وسلم, Would enter upon a sick person He would say Never mind May it, the sickness, be a purification, if Allah wills. And in the other narration, أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمِ رَبَّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ أَنْ يشفيك. Any Muslim who visits a sick person who, whose prescribed moment of death has not arrived, and supplicates seven times, and supplicates seven times, saying, As'alullah al-Azim, I ask Allah the Most Great, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, Lord of the Magnificent Throne, to cure you, saying it seven times. And if he finds in the sick person eagerness to be given ruqya, recitation of the Qur'an upon him or recitations from uh, specific uh, verses in the Qur'an or certain uh, invocations from the Sunnah then he may do so in order to comfort him and fulfill his eagerness for that. The twelfth or eleventh matter is that he shouldn't stay long uh, in his uh, visit lest it could cause the sick person discomfort how long he may stay the correct opinion is it depends with people and their conditions if you know or most likely it appears to you that he is pleased in your presence then stay and if you see any kind of discomfort then hasten to leave. These are some of the etiquettes regarding this matter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a benefit for myself and for everyone who listens to it. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.